Welcome everybody to today's Building My Legacy podcast. I have with me today, Katerina Rothman. She is with B-Flex Company, which is a B-Flex Linen, which is a company that does linen, bedding, clothing, beautiful things that she does for our homes and for us uh, to wear. And she has a very fascinating, fascinating story. She has journeyed from Moscow to Denver to become an entrepreneur and um, to also build a legacy. She has a generational legacy that's a part of her. So Katerina, please share your story with our audience. How did you get to what you're doing? And tell us about your generations that are involved. Hi, Louis. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Uh, as you correctly correctly mentioned, uh, my story is truly generational. I involve pretty much every every member of my family into my passion of what what I'm doing. Uh, and truly, truly, my mom was the was the initial inspiration as she's a very crafty person. She works with tons of textiles. She's just, she's just very, very skillful in what, in what she does. Uh, I, on the other hand, have troubles putting a thread into the needle, needle hole. Uh, but nonetheless, um, she was the one who taught me, who taught me everything I know about the fabrics and uh, how did I uh, start working with linen. Uh, another another member of my family, my future at that point, uh, my future husband uh, had issues with sleep, and so I started looking into solutions on on helping him uh, overcome those issues. That's how I learned that linen has amazing benefits that nature uh, that nature gifted to to the plant flax and to the linen as as fabric, and then. The final, the final piece of the puzzle uh, were my daughters. Actually, my first, uh, my first daughter. So when I became a mom, I just couldn't, couldn't see myself going back to nine to five job and miss her uh, milestones of development. And yeah, the the puzzle, the puzzle was complete. I realized that that's truly, truly my mission to go, to go after uh, my idea to run a linen business. So there are people listening who are going to be very curious. What does linen and flax do that helps you sleep? Absolutely. So linen, uh, linen comes from the flowering plant flax. Uh, it uh, grows in uh, specific areas in the world. It's uh, it's not as hard to cultivate, but you need to create uh, certain conditions uh, for it to grow to a certain. Uh, to certain measurements in order to possess those uh, amazing benefits. So linen is a fabric, uh, it's natural, first of all. Uh, it's very breathable, so your body breathes uh, throughout the time you're wearing linen clothing or while you're sleeping. Uh, the cool and tricky part uh, of the linen fabric is that it uh, it is it has thermoregulating capabilities. This means it's gonna keep you warm when it's cold outside and it's gonna keep you cool when it's hot outside. And uh, with it uh, also, uh, it also has a, a capability of absorbing, mo uh, absorbing moisture, sorry. And uh, this will allow you not to be sweaty throughout the night. And if, uh, even if you're a hot sleeper, uh, linen's gonna absorb all this moisture and you're not gonna toss and turn throughout the night. Wow. That's not it, Louis, that's not it. There is so, so much more linen, linen can do for you. Uh, it's, I, I just have a great pleasure working with natural fabrics and linen in particular, because this is something that nature gifted us long time ago. And we just forgot about it, uh, living in our plastic life uh, that we have right now and living among all the synthetic materials that surround us. I think so much, but part of what people move away from linen for is it's it gets wrinkled more easily and so people tend to get drawn to other products so speak a little bit about that because i know there's new processing that people utilize so that linen has retains its integrity 
Definitely. Uh, there are some some processes that you can uh, you can apply to the fabric uh, at its final stages, so it would be less wrinkly. In fact, linen does get wrinkled. This is just this. It's not a very elastic uh, fabric. Uh, again, it doesn't have any man-made uh, fibers in it. It's just the pure. It's purely coming from from the stem uh, stem of the plant. Uh, so. Linen will will get wrinkled from time to time, but there is a beauty in it, uh, in, in this rustic look, as you can uh, lift up the the design of your interior with it, or just give yourself a flawless, effortless, uh, effortless look when you when you wear a linen. Uh, the cool, the, the interesting thing about about this fabric that uh, it actually massages why it wrinkles because of uh, its texture and its texture massages your body when you sleep or when you wear it, uh, actually increasing the blood circulation and that what helps you uh, wake up more rejuvenated in the morning. Really, that's fascinating. That is very fascinating. But when you look at history and um, royalty, really beautiful clothing. Much of it came from linen originally. Um, linen does, uh, is considered a luxury, a luxury fabric, especially today. It's a, a lot of times it's considered as a luxury fabric because of its price point. Uh, Back in the day, uh, people used it because of its durability. They still use it because of its durability today. But that was one of the main uh, factors uh, why royalty uh, used to uh, used to uh, use it in every uh, in their everyday life. Uh, Sorry, <laughs> got lost. Uh, got lost in my thoughts uh, a little bit. So yes, yeah, so it's a it's a luxury fabric because of uh, its price point, and uh, it's hard to automize a lot of processes in uh, production of linen because lots of it uh, require manual manual work, and so eventually it just it just adds up. But as I mentioned before. Linen is very durable. It's about five times stronger than any cotton fabric uh, that you can put your hands on. So actually, when you're investing in linen, you're getting a great deal just because it's going to last you, uh, let's say, a linen bed set is going to last you at least a decade. Back in the day, uh, linen bedding was passed along as an heirloom. So you get you get a good run for your money. It's an investment uh, also in your health, which is a very important factor. You know, one of the things that you have also talked about, Katerina, is the sustainability. It, it's good for the environment. So why is that better for the environment than some of the other uh, synthetics that we use or other products that we use? Uh, thank you, thank you for bringing up uh, this topic. It's uh, it was one of my missions to actually start a sustainable business. I think it's very important to to think about the footprint that we leave behind, you know, in our everyday life as well as in our professional uh, life. Uh, Production of linen is sustainable by itself just because, first of all, you can use all the parts of the plant uh, that you're cultivating. We're all familiar uh, with the flax seed uh, or flax seed oil uh, that is widely used uh, as a nutrition or uh, in, in, culinary, uh, in culinary fields. Uh, then again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we use the stem the fiber from the stem of this plant uh, to, we to weave fabric and all the little pieces uh, that fall off or can basically use can be used in uh, construction uh, as part of the insulation uh, material. Another factor that adds to the sustainability uh, of the whole uh, manufacturing process is that we use so much less water uh, to produce, let's say, one yard of linen versus uh, versus the same cotton. The it's it's hundreds hundreds of times less. Uh, add on top that uh, no toxic materials are used to process this fabric. 
again because it's coming from the stem of the plant it's already a long fiber that you work with if you think about how cotton is produced or silk is produced you need to add a lot of um, chemicals that are later on uh, eventually end up in the environment so i truly i truly enjoy working with this fabric as i know that that the footprint is is basically not there. It's a zero, zero waste production and linen by itself is biodegradable. So if it goes back in the environment, it will disintegrate. Yes. And that leave a footprint, which is really fabulous, isn't it? Absolutely. So Katerina, you source very carefully where your linen comes from. Linen for you is purchased primarily where? Uh, so we, uh, we uh, cultivate flax in uh, French and uh, Belgium fields, because that seems to have the best climate, climate conditions, as well as linen has been produced there for many, many years. And uh, craftsmen there really know what, <laughs> what they're doing and how to properly uh, raise that, uh, raise that plant. And then we take it to Portugal and that's exactly where we are weaving, uh, our, um, our fabric. Uh, we collaborated with a family owned uh, factory there. So it's, <laughs> it's a pleasure to do a family to family business. Got it. And then is it also made, are, are your, is your linen made in Portugal then and then shipped to the U S or how, what do you do? Uh, so, yes, so uh, the larger items such as uh, linen bedding sets, duvet covers, uh, we make it, we make it there uh, on, on the Portugal, Portugal uh, factory. And then uh, some items such as uh, we, we're just initiating our, our clothing, clothing line and uh, let's say 2020 uh, made us think about making linen masks. Another fantastic, fantastic opportunity to use a breathable, breathable fabric. Um, where else if not on your face, right? Uh, so those type of items that we produce locally here. Uh, so yeah, so we import and we produce uh, here in States with, uh, with hopes to eventually bring all the production uh, here locally to be able to create workspaces. <laughs> so right now you're selling, you sell primarily where? Is it in the United States? Is it online? Do you have retail shops? How do people buy your wonderful, beautiful stuff? Uh, we do have an online store. Uh, it's at bflexlinen.com, uh, as well as we have a local uh, brick and mortar store that carries our linen. Uh, it's in downtown Denver. Okay. So what made you choose Denver? You came from Moscow. What made you choose Denver as your place to begin business? Uh, so my husband's originally from from this area. We uh, we initially moved to New York after we decided to uh, to leave Russia, uh, as he likes to call it, to decompress me from one big city to another big city, but in a different culture. And then it was time uh, for us to start a family, and we just decided it's better. It's better to bring it home, as he likes to say uh, to say that. And I certainly enjoy uh, the amount of green color surrounding us here in Colorado. It's 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 a great place to raise a family and to run a sustainable business. It is a great place. People are very conscious of what is sustainable, what's good for the environment. So tell us. What for you, textiles, um, manufacturing in, in home textiles has been um, one of the things our country moved out of and did much of our production overseas, particularly in China, Europe also, um, old Eastern Europe to some extent. So as you have started your business in this area, what have been your biggest challenges? Uh, I think the biggest challenge is is to pick, to keep control of of your production and uh, and of your quality. 
Uh, apart from that, I uh, take a good care as we touch the topic of sustainability. That would be terrible for me to put all this work into making such a sustainable uh, product and then deliver it in a plastic bag. So we take a good care in uh, and put a lot of thought in into our packaging. Our packaging is made out of post-consumer waste, and again, it's fully recyclable. We um, uh, we inspire people to to reuse it or to recycle it themselves by by adding a lovely sticker on the bottom of those boxes. So you'll never find a piece of plastic uh, in our packaging, uh, and I take I take pride in that. <laughs> so those those were the two two main uh, main issues: the to keep to keep uh, quality control and to make sure that our our packaging is uh, sustainable and recyclable. And it might not sound as a as a big uh, uh, as a big problem, but trust me, when it comes to to the price points, you. That just makes you makes you think as a, as a business owner. Do you do you save a little or you do the right thing? And we certainly, as I like to see it, <laughs> did the right thing. So as when I would do business in Europe, often people would take things out of the package, give you the packaging, and then just take the product. They didn't want the waste. Is so, that right? Yeah. So, that's that's a great that's a great thing. This this year was the first year when uh, where I did not wrap any uh, holiday presents for for our kids, and they had just one bag uh, in which the new gift was put every night, and then gifted, and then bag was reused. And I I inspire all my friends to follow to follow the same the same trend because actually the the wrapping paper the one that has all the prints and colors is can cannot be fully fully recycled and that's that's a disappointment as you look into the next five years what will that look like for you oh liz i would the definitely would like to become uh, a linen destination. I would like Beflex Linen uh, to become a place where people know that anything that they choose is going to be made out of natural material. It's going to be done right. It's going to um, it's going to be delivered uh, right to you. And certainly um, Certainly, just just to become the the hundred percent linen linen destination for all the linen lovers and those and those who are just discovering this uh, fabric for themselves or just opting in into a, a better and healthier lifestyle. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we're constantly uh, bringing more colors uh, for our batting collections. Uh, as I mentioned, we're planning to do our first. Uh, clothing, uh, loungy clothing line uh, that goes in line with, uh, with the whole home aspect uh, of linen. And yeah, just, just to continue making more, more pieces uh, for your everyday life uh, made out of linen. You know what, linen is so beautiful, so beautiful. And so encourage people if they want to see your products. I'm guessing it's also available. You can look at it online on your website. And for those of you who are listening, we will have the link to Katerina's website um, in the show notes. So you can get in contact with her. You can also take a look at some of the beautiful things that she is doing. And I think also um, for those of us who talk about sustainability and being environmentally friendly. I think as we make our purchases, it makes a lot of sense for us to think about how are our things manufactured? What's the raw material that goes into the manufacturing of the product? And Definitely. It's, uh, it's like you start reading the labels uh, in the grocery store of, of the items that you buy. I think it's an important thing to, to read the labels of your, of your textiles, understand uh, where it's coming from, how it's made, where it is made. 
it could be a difficult task uh, in the in the beginning, but if you just start, uh, you can get acquainted with certain certifications uh, that help you choose the right the right fabrics. Wonderful. Lois, I'm gonna. I'm, I, I hope I'm, I can make the uh, shopping experience for those who are gonna be interested in looking at at my linen a little bit easier. I made a, a discount code for fifteen percent uh, off for all your listeners. Uh, if they use the code My Legacy on our website, um, they they get their uh, linens a little bit easier. <laughs> oh wow! How fun! Thank you for that. Katerina, thank you so much. And so those of you who are listening, take advantage. Linen doesn't come at a discount very often. So enjoy yes. it and enjoy taking a look at what Katerina has produced. <laughs> Katerina, yes. thank you so much for your time today and for being with us and for sharing your story and for certainly tell, sharing what you're doing to make our world much more environmentally safe and friendly. Thanks. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you, those of you who are listening to Building My Legacy podcast today. Be sure to remember to visit our website as well at buildtomorrow.com and our social media sites as well. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell button above. Leave comments. We'd love to hear what you think. And visit our other social media links as well. Thanks much.